Rachel, um, you uh, posted in a, uh, a recent blog post at, at Femina, you wrote about, uh, you used a milkshake analogy. Mm, yes. Um, <laughs> could you uh, just recap for us what that milkshake analogy uh, sure. was? And, and Right. It comes from, I think, when the twins were still nursing infants and I had basically two toddlers and babies. And I think we, I just would have that time where you felt like there's nothing left, like everybody's still just demanding, you know, something from you. And uh, Luke and I have started referring to it as too many straws in my milkshake right now. <laughs> like there's just too many places you're being pulled trying to, trying to, uh, the fun, you know, it's the phenomenon of multiple straws in one thing. Everybody sucks a lot harder because they see the level going down when other people are <laughs> drinking. It's like, quick, quick, get it. And uh, when you get to the bottom, it's a bu it's that loud sound of a bunch of straws <laughs> slurping around at the bottom. Um, and when that happens to you at 10.30 a.m., <laughs> yeah, you a feel like, sign. oh, no. <laughs> yes, exactly. I got nothing. Um, so really, the point of that, that was always just something that we used as a description of feeling like I don't have anything left to give. And in our house, we always find it better to think it's funny. <laughs> it helps to, to saying things like, too many straws in my milkshake is a much it's a more cheerful way of looking at I feel wasted right now. <laughs> like, uh, would you say would you say that that is the hardest part of mothering or would you say uh, would you point to something else? Um, it's certainly one of them. I don't know I think different phases of mothering have different challenges. I know for a lot of people there's a long phase of um, having a horrible time with not being able to sleep through the night like having like that that can be a really intense Mm -hmm. challenge because it's something you never face but then that fades off and then you have a different challenge right. um, so I think since motherhood has a lot of different cycles there's always something that is hard but uh, I would say probably the hardest thing is just consistency knowing what you're what you're doing and not giving in to discouragement or not um, I have told Luke a lot of times I feel like I'm stuck in traffic at home like I know where I'm trying to go here like all I'm trying to do is catch up on the laundry and make dinner and get like I know what I'm trying to do here is, but I'm just is, stuck in traffic is that too much to ask <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but and the important thing about that is you have to you have to have faith that it's going to open up that you're going to have a chance to pull out and get something done um, and it's just adjusting to that cycle adjusting to the fact that most of your work at home doesn't ever get done like as funny as that is right. to say, like I can remember actually having a, you might work really hard to catch up on the laundry and then you say, yes, I did it. And then it's like, wait, where did all this come from? Like, <laughs> I just thought I caught up on this. Um, but realizing that all of your work at home is never supposed to be done. Like this isn't like I'm not supposed to end up with the house perfectly clean and all the laundry done and everything, you know, it's just not supposed to happen like that. It's supposed to be an ongoing process. Um, but And I think that there's just a lot of opportunities for discouragement or uh, thinking you're doing a bad job and giving up about something. Uh, let's go back to the, uh, <coughs> you said it's it's good to confront the empty milkshake uh, with, uh, with a joke or a, mm -hmm. a description like this is an empty milkshake. But <laughs> do you have any practical comments about how to go about getting more milkshake? Um, yeah, I do. I think a big part of it, I've used this illustration before somewhere, but um, that the story in the Old Testament about the woman with the jars of oil right. and that how the answer was just pour, like the right. Lord okay. will fill it, you pour, and he'll give you what you, like it will just keep coming way beyond the size of the little thing you're pouring out of. And that is a really important thing because... If you know you're supposed to give it, give it. Like, don't calculate what you have to give. Just give it. Like the woman with the cruise of oil or Jesus and the f loaves and the fishes. Or right. In the just, Psalms, uh, open your mouth and I will fill it. Right. right. It's a total pattern in all of Scripture, even like manna. Like, don't start trying to stockpile this stuff. Like, right. God gives it new every day. He gives it to you when you need it. And um, especially when it is you just being faithful and doing what you need to do, you know, there are, uh, you, I think 
fundamentally it's faith that God will give you what you need. So you step out, you, your kids get to the bottom of the milkshake and you hear that terrible sound and it's 10.30 a.m. <laughs> and so you say by faith to the kids, there's plenty more where that came from. God will supply. Yes, God. like we can do this. It's going to be, uh, yeah, there is a way to do this. And we have a lot of, you know, at different times you develop different ways to try to cope with it. But one of the best things that I have found is to stop trying to do whatever else it is that you're trying to do. Like, but just to, you know, just change the, change the, uh, the change what we're doing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, kids right now, I want you to go jump on my bed for a few like <laughs> things that are not in the normal pattern of life or things that you can do that are um and there was a time i know i i usually don't share this because i'm pretty sure this is unique to me <laughs> but i really felt like i needed to learn how to yodel <laughs> because when the house was being so wild and everything was like where i feel like i don't even know where to start like somebody's having this problem and two kids are crying and something else is happening. And I just felt like, I think the right thing to do here would be to start yodeling. <laughs> like it's just this so much noise and so much action. I never really, I never really got there to actually apply my idea, but pretty I, sure it would help. I, I think I also remember in the same spirit, you also mentioning to your mother one time, <laughs> you wanting to take up, uh, learn how to smoke cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it was the winter after, the twins were probably a couple months old and uh, our other girls were barely three and still one and then the twins. So two nursing infants and two little children. It was gray and wet and like we were stuck in the house and I felt so touched and pulled on and just like your entire day was right. just like I'm holding two infants and there's other kids climbing on my back and it's this whole and we would be in the car and I would see people you know out on their porches with their coat on just like doing I think like I just need to do that that just looks so good right now I need standing, to just, by, standing myself on the porch I need to just cold. step outside and just <laughs> but I I didn't I knew that I didn't actually want to be a smoker but that just appealed for a little while that and also I would take the garbage out and actually stand by the garbage can for a second feeling like okay whoo breather like and then you feel like okay it's going back in we're we're headed back in <laughs> And uh, but that time, you know, that has we're not it's not quite that intense, not that kind of physically intense anymore. Well, that's good. Yeah, it's good that mm -hmm. that wore off.